Hello pilots and mission creators and welcome back to DCS World's Let's Build a Mission. And I'm going to start doing things a little bit differently with the mission uh, editor as it became a little difficult to try to categorize everything. So now I'm going to sort of tell you how to create a specific type of mission as I go along and then any specific triggers that come new then you know I'll announce them then. So for a lot of you this is going to be some repeat information for those who've been following along all along. For those of you who are watching for the first time, perfect timing. Okay, so today I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a real quick uh, search and rescue operation in a multiplayer scenario. Now the cool thing about this scenario is it's actually multiplayer or single player capable at any given time without any change to the mission itself. Okay, so basically it gives you the option. You can also choose which role you want to play, whether you want to fly the rescue helicopter or you want to fly the close air support. All right, so let's sort of walk through what happens here. And to give you guys a breakdown, we have a FARP down here. And if you need uh, instructions on how to build a FARP, there is a uh, uh, video that I've done in the um, playlist for Let's Build a Mission on my channel. If you guys want to go and find that, uh, that'll be available. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description below and or a card up on the screen, but I always forget. So hopefully I'll remember this time. But... Okay, so we have our FARP here. Um, and this is where our helicopters are going to be landing um, and the player uh, helicopters will be spawning from. And then what, what have we got over here is we have the hospital. Okay, so this is what I've deemed this is to be, um, where we will be dropping the um, pilots and crew, however you want to call it, that we pick up from the crash site up over here. The scenario is we have a CH-47 that uh, crashed over here by uh, Oni or Ani, however you pronounce it. Um, <clears throat> and you can assume whatever you want as far as how it was shot or uh, crashed. Um, the story for me is it was carrying troops and supplies to refugees and was shot down. Okay, so then we have two groups that can be picked up and transported out of here by the helicopters. We have a couple different zones that we're going to use to create uh, scenic destruction, right? Smoke, fire, burning buildings, things like that. You know, sort of simulating the helicopter sort of crash, maybe dumped fuel as it went down and, and poured burning gasoline over everything, you know, or jet fuel, whatever. Um, and then we have two different um, antagonist units, right? So we have one, group one here. These are an attack group, and it's going to be all light vehicles, okay? And the reason why they're all light vehicles is they're... In case that no one's running close air support and you just want to run with a couple of helo gunships, right? The helos can't destroy a whole lot. You know, they can take out light vehicles, troops, um, transports, things like that. Um, but nothing that's particularly of any, you know, uh, heavy, heavy artillery or anything like that. You know, so this group will spawn only if only helicopters are detected in the area. This group is where we get our, you know, our T-55s, our T-72s, some uh, anti-aircraft artillery on the back of trucks. Um, we've got a couple of, uh, just a couple APC Tigers. Those are light, again, light transports, but then there's a couple of BTRs in there as well. All right, and so this is for the close air support, right? So that way they have something fun to play with, right? Because, you know, what's better than firing a ma Maverick at a tank? All right, and then so here's how the scenario all plays out. All right. Well, actually, sorry. One more thing. The other thing we've got going on here is we've got a few guys here that we've given an advanced waypoint action to set the frequency. So it's perform command, set frequency, an FM frequency of your of your choosing. Now it can be four digits, but it's two digit then two decimals. So thirty one point two two. 45.06 whatever something like that um, I just keep them in the whole numbers and then we want modulation to FM power I haven't really seen a difference between 100 and 10 I just set it as 100 to make me feel all warm and fuzzy inside I guess um, and then what we do is we have them transmit a message now the you have to have an audio file okay and what I use is if you download the DCS uh, CTLD and, and I'll try to again remember to put a uh, link for that in the description, but if not, just Google DCS CTLD and it pops right up. Um, download the CTLD master, and inside that master file, there's two audio files. There's a beacon.og and a beacon silent. The beacon actually plays a tone. I think it goes dee, 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 if I remember correctly, uh, where the beacon silent is just dead air. And you can use anything you want, MP3s, whatever, you know, floats your boat. Just remember that whatever audio you have selected, the pilots, when they tune the... Uh, radio to that frequency they're gonna hear it okay 
So we're using Beacon Silent here, okay, just dead air. And what it's allowing us to do is inside the UH-1 Hueys, it has an ability to home in on FM signals, right? It has a little needle that you follow and you steer the helicopter so that way that little needle's, you know, in center line. And so we're using it as waypoints because otherwise with the Huey, you have either your options are doing something like that or you have to use either the F-10 map constantly or you have to use your knee boards, all right? And it's just... It's a drag. I don't think it's particularly a lot of fun to fly like that. I think it's an immersion breaker. Um, so we have a few guys here that all have the same frequency. And essentially how this is going to work is when the mission starts, this guy activates. When we fly into this zone, he deactivates and this one activates, right? So it's off, on, then again, enter this zone, off, on. You guys can see what's happening and it guides us all the way to the target area. All right, so it just I think it makes it a little bit more fun, a little bit more immersive for the for the Huey pilots rather than having to use knee boards and F-10 maps. All right, and then these destruction zones, again, remember what they're for, you know, scenic destruction, because that way when we go through the trigger options, you guys are going to see it. Now, how would this mission is activated is through the F-10 menu, right? So you jump in the seat, you hit your radio menu, you go to the F-10 menu, and you have a list of, of different missions that we can activate. And I've only assigned it to certain aircraft. So I've assigned it to any aircraft that is cast capable. So that's pretty much, you know, you got your F-18, the F-16, the AV-8B Harrier, um, and of course, you know, the A-10 Thunderbolt. Um, I left the F-14 out because I just, I don't consider that a close air support aircraft, I think, you know, for it to be necessarily effective. It can drop some, some serious bomb loads, don't get me wrong. Um, but I, I just wouldn't call it, you know, a cast aircraft. Um, and then obviously the UH-1s can activate the mission, okay? And I'll show you guys how all that's done here in just a minute. And then the last thing also we have optional here is um, any fighter uh, capable, air-to-air -air capable aircraft um, can engage a, a couple of fighters as well, can activate them by radio command that will throw a little, you know, meatball into the mission there, have a couple of fighters coming after the close air support that have to be defended off, right? So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple things now. It's important to remember that we have a couple of different zones. So the big blue zone is um, our primary trigger zone. This is where most of the magic will happen as far as activating the mission and things being triggered at, at, uh, according to timing. And then we have another one here. The only one that you got to worry about is 1.2. I'm going to back out and move it around a little bit so you guys can see what its range is, right? So you can see that red circle moving around. Okay, so they have a couple of different um, options. I could have honestly done without this Rapid Fury 1 destroy, but uh, it just helps me keep things organized, really, is all it's for. Um, so anyway, so there, we have those three. And let's go ahead and take a look at the triggers and how to set it all up. And by the way, so you set your units up as, as you please. Um, and actually, before we get into the trigger options, let's take a look at a couple things. So these guys spawn. Okay, and then I have them running to their first waypoint. That's going to be the first action is to run to the waypoint. And then they are given this embarked transport. Now, what we're doing here is telling them to embark to a helicopter. Now, if we tick on this embark zone here, I want to move it around again a little bit so you can see. You can see a very light circle moving around the edges there. Okay, so it's a lot smaller than the big one, but you, hopefully you guys can see that. Hopefully that comes well on the screen. Okay, and so what that is, is this zone here that we've set. So what we've done is perform task, embark to transport, and you, this is all default, so we just leave it alone. Um, and then you select your vehicle group. These are all the transport capable um, units that I currently have set on the ground, okay, or set on the map. We want the UH-1. We want only a Huey to land inside that circle that I just showed you guys. As, right here, you can sort of see it. Okay, as long as a UH-1 lands inside that circle, they'll embark and they'll run up to the transport and jump on board. Okay, the reason why I always have a little bit of a waypoint is because I have found in the past that sometimes if you set this on the starting waypoint, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So what's going to happen is they're going to run to waypoint one, get this command, and then they're going to run to the center where this triangle is and wait for the transport to land. Okay, and that's the same for both of them. Okay, they both have that, that point selected. Okay, and then both the AI, let's talk about the AI for a second, a couple different operations. So the CAS, so this is our A-10 CAS that I have. So this, if, if no player wants to run the role of CAS, we have two A-10s that will take care of it for us. So on waypoint four here, okay, just before they reach the target area, we've given them the command, perform task, attack group, and then we select the groups that we want them to attack, you know, and I've added both of them, both group one and group two. Weapon, I leave it auto unless you want them to use a specific weapon, which we'll go over in a later video. 
um, and how to set that up. Matter of fact, the next one, I'll show you guys how to use something like that. Okay, now the reason why I put it back here and did it put it right over the waypoint or right over here is because you want to give them time to execute that command. If we move this waypoint to right here, what will happen is the A10s will get that command. They're not getting the command to attack until they reach that point. So they'll hit that point, then they'll have to turn back around, fly around, you know, and reset themselves up for the attack. What I have found is if you do it before the target area, and this goes for any mission, is on that first pass, they're already attacking, and then they come back around for t attack two rather than losing that time, right? So, and then the same thing with the um, Rapid Fury 1, okay, uh, rescue. This is our um, AI rescue helicopter. So if a p player doesn't want to be the rescue helicopter, that's fine. And so once again, way back here, we give him the command to now embarking. So we're going to go perform task embarking. So that means we're picking troops up. You come down here. Now this on land, if you want him to land and stay on the ground for a certain period of time, two, three, five, whatever minutes, that's when you would check this box and set it here. Um, distribution, if you wanted to distribute part of the group to one helicopter and part of the group to the other, that's how you would set that up as well. But I don't care who picks them up at this point um, for this particular mission. Okay, and then um, the last thing is obviously you'd come down here and tell it what group do you want me to pick up. And so we have again our Rapid Fury Rescue Me 1 and Rescue Me 2. That's these two groups down here that we've now assigned here. Okay, so you have to make sure you highlight them, then hit add, highlight them, then hit add, and then it gives you the total number of units the helicopter can carry. Okay, <clears throat> but also keep in mind that weight is considered. Um, when assigning troops to a helicopter. So if you, for example, put a group of 28 troops on board, you're going to have to pay attention to how heavy the aircraft is at that point because you're going to feel that in the stick. Okay. Um, all right. So let's go ahead now. We've talked about the basics. Let's see how it's all set up. I know it's kind of a long one, but there's a lot to this kind of stuff. So I want to show you guys how. So first thing we do is we create the mission item and assign it for the aircraft. So at mission start, these aircraft... Okay, so for example, we'll just start with this one, but understand this follows down below. So this is our group, the FARP Bravo UH-1s. So these are all of the player uh, flown aircraft that are down here, player Hueys. Okay, we've called it a radio. We've given it a name. So when I go to, I hop in the Huey, I hit my radio menu, I hit F10, I'm going to see Rapid Fury. Okay, then when I press Rapid Fury, I go, yep, I want to do that one. What it's going to do is activate flag 120. Now, I've gotten some emails and some questions about flags still where it seems like it might still be confusing for some. So let me just make this simple. Think of a flag as nothing more than a light switch. Okay? When I hit the button to say, yes, I want to do Rapid Fury, I'm taking light switch number 120, put a row of, of light switches, number 120, I'm flipping it up. All right? I'm turning the light on. All right? And then you have a bunch of parameters that you can attach to that. How long, you know, time since flag would be, okay, if I set time since flag 30 seconds, it would be 30 seconds after I flip that light on, here's what I want to happen, okay? And then obviously flag off, okay? You turn the light off. Um, in the conditions, you'll see flag is true, flag is false, true for on, off for false, okay? So they all get that radio item created, and then all of this is is the different aircraft groups that I wanted to be able to activate this mission, okay? So then moving down. All right, flag is true, 120. So again, remember, true for on. So we've turned flag 120 on. What happens now? All right, so that's when we come back over here, and let's talk about everything that's about to go down. So first thing, explosions. So we're going to get explosions, and the reason why you want to use explosions if you want to simulate destruction of scenery is because it will actually destroy some of the scenery. You'll get craters in the ground, things like that, you know, destroyed buildings, trees, etc. Um, so each one of those yellow circles that I had down here, there's going to be an explosion that takes place. Then also on them, we're going to get smoke and fire. Now, the cool thing about the smoke and fire, and you just go into effect, smoke, pick the zone that you want it to happen in, and then small smoke and fire is the selection. And there's a couple of different options, medium smoke, large smoke, but do not underestimate large and huge. Like, they're not kidding. They're large and huge. Um, <laughs> and then you can set the density of it, right? And so play around with that and figure out what you like, what you don't like. Um, that, that took a lot of... Um, uh, trial and error, you know, testing it, going back in the mission in and out to sort of get a visual reference of, okay, what is small, what is large, what is the density, you know, what's the effect, right? So anyway, so have it all these yellow zones, okay? We have some smoke, some fire, and some craters indicating some explosions and damage. 
Then we have group activate rapid fury waypoint one. That's the guy I was telling you about that's down here. Okay, so this guy activates. Okay, so now we have the radio homing frequency active, and so that way the pilot flown uh, or the player flown UH ones can navigate through the FM frequency. And then radio item removed. That F10 uh, radio item that said rapid fury that we said, yes, I want to play it. Well, we want to remove that radio item after the flag is active because there's no need to have that radio item anymore. We've already activated it. Okay. And that's the thing to remember with any of these groups, guys, with any groups. You cannot activate a group and then deactivate and then activate again. Okay, once you activate and deactivate, that's it. They're gone. Okay, so there's no more. So even if we turn this flag off and tell everything to shut off, okay, deactivate everybody, we can no longer reactivate that same group. It's, it's, they're out of there. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind. So that's why I said there's no, there's no need to keep that radio item anymore. It's pointless. Once it's active, once these groups activate, you're done. Okay. And then we have a message to all of our CAS aircraft, so you can see here it's A10C, AV8, okay, all these VMF A286s, that's my uh, F18 squadron, same thing with the 168, that's uh, my buddy's uh, squadron, and then the FARP Hueys, okay, so the message is please deactivate AI CAS uh, via the F10 menu if you are participating in the Rapid Fury operation, okay, and so that's telling us, all right, I'm flying the CAS mission. I don't want AI. So we do not want these A-10s to activate. Okay. And then vice versa for the Huey. Please deactivate AI search and rescue the F-10 map. If you are participating in the rapid fury operation. Yes, I know it says the N. I'll have to fix that for every single one of these. I'll do that later. Okay. And then obviously here it tells you um, how long you want the message to display. Clear view will mean that this message will not display until any previous messages have cleared the screen. Okay, and again, you want to make sure your flag is true. All right, so, and then a message to everybody in the Blue Coalition, Operation Rapid Fury has been activated. Okay, that way, if you're out tooling around doing something else and you see this mission's activated, you go, oh, hey, that might be kind of fun. You can go and join it, all right? All right, so now here's how this part works. So for Rapid Fury cast player, all right, so a player is going to run the role of the A-10. It's going to run cast. This is a radio item added for group. And this is what I was talking about where we added this radio item for all of the cast capable aircraft. Okay. So these are going to be our A-10s, AV-8s, the F-16s, again, our Hornets, and that's it. Okay. And it's just Rapid Fury Cast is what they're going to see on their screen. They go to the F-10 menu and they see Rapid Fury Cast. All right. And now what happens when we activate this? So we want Flag is True 120. That's the requirement for this radio item to be created. So then when we come down, well, when we push that button, okay, so the button here that we're going to activate, now we're going to flip on light switch 129, okay, we're going to turn on uh, flag 129. When 129 is true, so it's on, we're going to remove that radio item. We're going to deactivate the A10 cast, okay, this will no longer be an active group. And then finally, message to coalition, rapid fury AI cast has been deactivated, okay. And it's going to be the same game with the Hilo. The Hilo is obviously a lot simpler. So flag is true, radio item add for group, fart, bravo, UH-1, rapid fury Hilo, flag is uh, 128. And so here, flag is true, 128, group deactivate the rapid fury uh, rescue helicopter. So he's down here. So this guy is AI. He will not spawn. We're going to remove that radio item. And again, operation rapid fury, AI search and rescue helicopter has been deactivated. Okay, so now a player has no choice. A, the only way to complete this, that's the other thing that you must keep in mind with doing it like this. The only way this mission can now be completed is if a player gets into a helicopter and goes and gets it. And same thing with the A-10. Um, the A-10, the mission can probably still be completed without it as long as you are really quick with the freaking helicopter and manage to not get shot up by the, uh, the hostile groups that are coming your way. All right, so then we have um, the uh, waypoints. Okay, so this, here's all the waypoints. So remember, the flag 120 when we started the mission started this first guy. So now what's happening here is flag is true 120. We want to make sure that's always a condition because we don't want a helicopter to be flying around here when the mission is not active and have it trigger this action. Because if we were to take this away and we did not activate the mission, this is still going to happen. This, this would take place. So make sure that whatever your starting trigger is, is true. Okay, part of coalition... We want Blue Coalition, Rapid Fury Waypoint 1, that's this zone right here, and a helicopter has to be in it, 
Okay, so a blue helicopter flies into this zone while, while Rapid Fury operation is active. Group 1 will be activate. This guy, Waypoint 1, and Waypoint 2 will then activate. Okay, this guy up here. Okay, and it goes the same through that each one, right? So here it's going to be, again, same conditions, but now it's going to be Waypoint 2 deactivated, activate Waypoint 3. And then the final one, actually, down here, um, we'll do one more thing that I need to show you guys. These boys down here are who will start transmitting that signal to get us to it. But we did something a little differently with them. Okay, what we did with them is, and the reason why we had to do this is because the group is this group is activated when we start the mission. So what we did is we gave them a trigger option. So here, these are waypoint options. When they get to whatever waypoint number this is, so if, like I said, they run to waypoint one, this happens. What these are is trigger action, trigger actions, which we can set up here, which is what we've done. So when a helicopter enters this zone, a blue helicopter enters this zone while flag 120 is true, we have AI task push, okay? And that's going to be set frequency 31 and the same thing to transmit the message, okay? And we set that for both of these groups down here. And that way, it takes them straight to the our guys that are down. All right, so we get down there. Now let's talk about some of the other stuff here. Here's how to make sure the AI does activate. So flag is, time sense flag is 120. Okay, so one tw flag 120 is true. 10 seconds later, we also want to make sure flag is false. 128, that's the flag that deactivates the AI, remember? Okay, so we want to make sure that, that light switch is turned off, okay? And then part of coalition in zone, this is going to be blue, rapid fury one, which is the big blue zone here, and an airplane. Okay, so this is somebody who wants to play the role of close air support, but doesn't want to fly the helo. Okay, so you fly in here with any of the cast capable aircraft that we've designated. Okay, this flag is active, this flag is off. Okay, it will then activate the um, AI helicopters, which are right here. Okay, same thing for the cast. Cast, we're going to make sure that time since flag, and actually we didn't need this time since flag, but that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, I think I was thinking something else when I first started this, but anyway, I digress. So here we have flag is true, 120, or flag is false, 129, and the opposite. In a blue coalition, inside Rapid Fury 1.2. Now here's why I created the 1.2. You got to think about how much slower a helicopter is uh, versus an, air, or an airplane. So when a helicopter, an AI helicopter, enters this zone, okay, um, the A-10s back here will spawn, okay, because you got a you got a UH-1 cruising around about 80 knots. You've got the A-10 coming around at about 240 knots, depending on loadout, okay. So I, that's why I have the two zones. So this is um, Rapid Fury 1.2 is what I titled this green one here, all right. And again, it's to account for the speed difference. All right. That way, when the Huey enters this zone, the A-10 should be rolling the corner right about the time the Hueys do. Um, and just make sure that the pilots get to see something. The A-10s will probably still beat the helicopters there. But at least then the pilots who are flying the helicopter roll get to come around and see the A-10s blowing crap up, which is always fun. doesn't matter what you're doing. Okay. And then group, group activate. Once the helicopter enters this zone, activates the A-10Cs. Okay. Now, here's our... Um, enemy uh, groups up here. All right, so we have Rapid Fury Hostile Ground Activate. And first, it's going to be part of Coalition in Zone. And actually, we need one more thing to happen here. So I'm glad we caught this. Again, this is one of those ones that we were just talking about. Right now, if any helicopter were to fly through this zone, whether the mission was active or not, these guys would activate. So we need to make sure flag is true, 120. And I'm going to move up because that's that's priority. All right, so flag is true, 120. So the mission has been activated. Now, part of Coalition Blue is inside Rapid Fury 1. Okay, a helicopter. Okay, it, it will activate um, Group 1 right here. Okay, and actually, you know what? I think what we're going to do is change that to the green zone as well. Oops. Where was that? There we go. 
So we're going to change this zone to Rapid Fury 1.2. Okay, so a helicopter enters this zone with 120 active. Our first group, that light armor group, or that light vehicle group, excuse me, will activate. Okay, now let's take a look at the second one. Oh, and we still need another one. Oh, and the other thing that will happen, sorry, is also with that previous one, we're going to activate flag on 121. Okay, but we're going to change actually this a little bit because actually I don't want to do it like that. So we're going to delete that. I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to change. All right, so flag is true 121. We don't care about that. We do want flag is true 120. We want the mission to be active. We're going to bring that up. Part of coalition in zone, rapid fury airplane, group activate two. But we're actually going to change this to activate both of them. If a group is already active and you give it an activate command, nothing happens. It just ignores it. It's, a, it's Again, it's a dead trigger. The group has already been activated, so there's no harm in having both. But so what we're doing here now is the second an airplane, a cast capable aircraft, enters this zone while the mission is active, both of these groups will activate because the close air support, that's what they're there for. They're there to come down and hammer all these vehicles to death, right? So that's just a better way of doing that. All right, and then now the hostile air to air. Okay, these are these two MIGs that are, are uh, either MIGs or SU 27s. I can't remember which one I did. Um, but basically, and we need to do it again. So we made another major fault here. I'm glad you guys are watching this. Flag is true. If I did not have this, any time a blue fighter or a blue airplane flew into this zone, they'd get this radio message. So that's kind of annoying. All right, so there we go. Let's do that instead. So flag is true 120, part of coalition in zone, blue rapid fury one and an airplane flies into the blue zone. They get this radio item. All right, and this is any AI or air to air capable aircraft. I gave it to everybody. Rapid fury air to air flag on is 122 and I gave it to any air to air capable aircraft. And then message to coalition is going to be hostile aircraft can be spawned by blue four fighters operating near the rapid fury operations zone. Okay. And so then they would activate that. Okay. So we got here hostile air to air flag is true 122 group activate. This is our uh, AI aircraft and then rapid fury uh, radio item remove, you know, that radio item that we just used. All right. And then finally to complete the mission, all that has to happen is part of group in zone uh, rescue me one and rescue me two inside of hospital arrival zone. So what's going to happen is when we land the helicopters, you would use your um, F7 radio menu um, inside the uh, uh, cockpit of the helicopters and you go to your airborne uh, troops radio menu and tell them to embark. Now how that works is because they were given that embarking command at waypoint one, once we tell them to disembark, no matter where we put them, their next command will be to report to their next waypoint after the embarking command. So in this case, it would be waypoint two is the next waypoint following the command to board the helicopters. So basically, we'll bring our, our boys over here. We'll land them down over here. We'll tell them to disembark. They'll then report to waypoint two and then continue on their waypoint sequence. So at waypoint three, they will now be inside this hospital arrival zone. Okay, and then now we're, all we're doing here is turning off all the flags that we've turned on. There's probably no real reason to do so, but, you know, it's one of those what the hell. Um, and actually, we can add 128 and 129, just because we use those up here for the Cass and Hilo aircraft. All right, and then we clean up the map. Group deactivate uh, 1 and 2. We act deactivate any rem remnants of the attack group, so 1 and 2. Group deactivate Rapid Fury um, AI, so in case those fighters that we spawned are still active, it will deactivate them, okay? And then finally, and obviously this is very generic, but Rapid Fury complete, so you know the mission's complete. All right, guys, so if you have any questions or comments, please don't uh, hesitate to email me. Um, or comment in the fields below or leave a comment down in the uh, Eagle Dynamics forums to this playlist. All right, um, but that's a real uh, quick and dirty search and rescue operation to give you a little bit of option where you can play multiple roles. Um, so see it from different perspectives, which is always fun. All right, so uh, I will see you guys in the next one and uh, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.